Hey guys, so before we start today's main programming, let's go through my answer to day1.py. So what this is, is I have simply created the string that contains the sentence that we want to print out. I've encapsulated the string in two quotation marks as we have demonstrated in yesterday's videos. And we've fed this entire string as a sentence, as an argument into the print function, which means that we need to surround this argument by parentheses and we need to put the parentheses after the print function so that the print function knows that this is the argument. And by calling print, all we need to do then is to run this Python script through the Python interpreter and it will print out the sentence for us in the terminal. And that was a very easy introduction to your first exercise. Now let's dive into day two's material and see how we can improve on this. Using Python variables and operators. We're going to go through day two in four different videos and we're going to talk about number one, understanding Python variables. Number two, how we can use variables in code. Number three, understanding Python operators. And then the usage of Python operators. So, understanding Python variables. In this video, we're going to take a look at number one, what are variables? And number two, how do we create variables? Again, let's go into IPython, which we're familiar with from last time to explore variables. I'm in my IPython, as you know, and last time in IPython, we talked about how if we give Python a number or a string, it doesn't know what to do with it, so it simply prints it back to us. So the first thing to know about variables is what's not a variable. So things like numbers, if we have, let's say, a hundred, or things like strings, where we are saying, hello world, these are not variables, right? Because they are not variables. So you can't change what a hello world string is, or you can't change the fact that a number 100 is 100, right? So these are fundamental data types or what's called literals, where it's pieces of information that are fixed instead of variables, or you can think of it as data containers that have variable information inside them. So in Python, you can create variables and use variables by typing anything that is doesn't start with a number and doesn't start with a punctuation. So if you type any word that starts with A to Z, you can create a variable. So for example, I can say variable one like this, and it would tell me that this variable is not defined but nonetheless is a variable. However, there are some words in Python which are reserved as Python standard functions or variables or methods, in which case if, for example, we type print, then it tells us that that's actually a reserved variable which points to the function print, which we know prints things out on the terminal. So the rule generally is any word, I guess English word or word that begins with an alphabet can be used as a variable and you can assign values to that variable. But then some names are reserved or used already in the Python standard library or in the Python standard language, which means that you can't use that names as variables. So for example, you can use if as variables, right? That just doesn't happen. Or else is again, not something that you can use as a variable name. You also can't have variable names that start with the number. So if we say it tells you it's an invalid syntax, so you're left with doing something like this. Or you can't start a variable with punctuation, so you can't do, let's say, this variable, and then Python doesn't know how to interpret this because if it sees the start of a quotation mark, it assumes that you're starting a string and not starting a variable. So the general rule of thumb and also a good programming practice is always begin your variables with an alphabet. And generally the naming convention of a variable is to describe what the variable does. So we can have, let's say name contains a string that is a name, or we can have year contain 
a number that denotes the current year. One habit I see from beginning programmers that you should avoid is to name all your variables variable one, variable two, variable three. So some people do like variable one, Rudy, and then variable two, 2018. So the issue with this is you have no idea why the variables exist and what they should contain, especially if you come back to your own code after six months or if somebody else looks at your code. Whereas if I name my variables sensibly with English meanings, then it's very easy for me to understand that a variable that is named name should contain names and a variable named year should contain years. And this allows the programmer to apply his common sense to the code that he's seeing in front of him. So how do we create variables? So we have already seen this here when we are demonstrating from in 11 to in 14, when we're demonstrating how we should name our variables. To create a variable, it's very easy. We can assign any value to a variable and that variable would take on the type of that value and also the value of that value. So if we again say name equals to Rudy and then we click name again, what Python has done is it will look up what the variable name contains and it sees that it contains a string. It returns that string and that string says Rudy. Similarly, we can look at year and it will give us the number 2018 back. We can also instantiate it to an empty value. So we can have name equals to just two quotation marks. This stands for an empty string. So we can have name and it will be a string, but you can't just create a variable without giving it a value. So you can't just do variable one. As demonstrated before, it would say that the variable one is not defined and you can't not define it. Whenever you create a variable, you have to give it a value. A special case in Python is to give it the value none. So we can say variable one equals to none. And you notice a few things from the gets go. So we have variable one assigned to nothing. And you can also notice that none is actually a reserved keyword, which is a special data type that denotes nothing. The reason none exists is because you need a value for when there's actually nothing in a variable, right? And which is why none exists. So you can use none on its own as a variable. So it's a reserved keyword. And also IPython helpfully helps us highlight that this is a reserved keyword. If we now go check out the value of variable one, we can see that we no longer get a name error, i.e. we have defined what variable one is, but then there's also no value associated with variable one. So IPython simply prints nothing. There's no out 22. And we have simply a variable that holds nothing. So this will become valuable later on when we talk about conditionals and loops where we can leverage the fact that variable one equals to none can give us some special cases. And that's all there is to it. So we've just learned about what are variables. Variables are containers that could contain values of different data types. So you can have a variable that contains a number in the data type integer, or you can have a variable that contain a string of words or a paragraph in the data type string. To create variables, we use the equal sign to assign a value to the variable. We cannot not assign a value to the variable because if we try to use a variable name without an assignment, it would tell us that this variable doesn't have a value, or it hasn't been instantiated, and it would give us a name error. However, we can assign a value of none to a variable to start a new variable that is essentially empty. And that's how we create empty variables.